So I'm glad we had a chance to catch up. I've been wanting to talk with you about electric vehicles and all the manufacturing that's going on in the Southeast. Yeah, me Have too. you seen a real explosion? It's been amazing. Um, yeah, if you look at uh, just the state of Georgia alone, if you look at you know the last 16 months, the news releases coming out, major investments from Hyundai, Rivian Automotive, and now Kia, um, and all that surrounds that, the jobs, new facilities, new infrastructure, it's really amazing. And the southeastern states really seem to be recruiting those kinds of developments, wouldn't you say? Yeah, some of our involvement um, with, with some of these companies that are looking to build their first production facility, for example, um, they really have the whole, uh, even international, available to them. And um, most of them tend to focus, you know, kind of North Carolina through into uh, Alabama, Mississippi, um, but there's an absolute focus on, on the Southeast. Are there any unusual aspects of when they're choosing locations that you've observed? For them, you know, what seems to be most important is the workforce. Um, and that makes a big difference, obviously. Um, the state's abilities to work, to train up the workforce, but also connectivity. Um, Georgia has a, a immense port um, the Atlanta airport can connect you to just about anywhere. And that's been real attractive along with the schooling systems. Uh, but I also think the, the regulatory climate helps a lot. Um, states are invested in promoting economic development in this way. And EV is, is sort of the next great thing uh, from an economic development perspective. And the great thing is that our team has the skills to help with the siting and with the development of the site. What are some of the permits that you've encountered as companies try to build out their sites? Sure, and, and you know, by our team, the, the environmental team certainly uh, plays a critical role in this, but I think more broadly, uh, the firm uh, with its sort of energy pedigree, as well as some of the experience we have, you know, I think the people that everyone wants to talk to are like Adam Kobos and Ann Loomis, who understand the tax uh, implications and benefits available to folks who are making these types of investments. What we've been helping people do uh, is sort of chart out that timeline because you still have to get permits um, and you know a Corps of Engineers permit can take anywhere from you know six months if you're amazing to too much longer and charting that out and coming up with permitting strategies and sites that will permit on the timeline you need to meet your market pressure or to meet your you know, sort of production uh, deadlines is, is critical. It takes sort of a sophisticated view of, of environmental permitting. So Army Corps of Engineers permits, there are state equivalent permits, obviously. And then when you get closer to breaking ground, obviously construction stormwater, um, things like that become important um, to, um, to, to plan ahead. And one of the things that I found that's kind of unique about EV permitting, and like you said, thinking through the timelines, is that a lot of the manufacturing seems to be going faster than a lot of the environmental standards that currently exist for certain types of permitting. Have you heard anything about that? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, a lot of, just take the water, for example, uh, if an EV factory is gonna be returning water, processed water to the sewer system, um, they would need to meet certain pretreatment standards depending on the nature of their, their activities and the pollutants of concern. Well, those standards were set in the early 80s, wasn't it? That's right. And for an entirely different type of production. And so there's, there's definitely a, a big role for, you know, for us to play in trying to manage these innovative technologies, the innovative production approaches with historical regulations um, that really weren't designed to, to fit those. And I think it's um, be interested in your experience, but I think it's particularly interesting in the EV space because to the employee level, these companies are trying to save the world. I mean, they're trying to protect the environment and they're driven by a very genuine uh, focus on those things. And they want to do everything right. I mean, all of our clients do. That's why they hire us is to make sure they're doing it right. But um, in this space in particular, that's, that's been interesting. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And I agree with you that a lot of the regulations are not keeping up with the manufacturing 
And there are materials that are being imported that have to be registered under TSCA um, that are vital to EV development. And like you said, there is a real sense of urgency of getting these uh, manufacturing operations up and running and getting these electric vehicle batteries out on the road, trying to get the timing to work properly and to get the registrations and the permits that you need to have in place sometimes takes a lot more time than, than desired. And we've talked, you know, we've talked a little bit about how, how important it is to get the permits you need to build and go vertical with your production facility so that you can meet your timeline. But then there's operational permits on the environmental side. What uh, experience have you had with, with some of those important permits? Well, you mentioned wastewater and that, that's a big one. Um, coupled with that, there's a lot more emphasis on PFAS and some questions about what types of constituents might be present as part of electric vehicle battery manufacturing and um, going up and down the supply chain to try and answer those questions and make sure that you're completing the pretreatment paperwork properly is a big issue and a big question. Um, and then, as I mentioned, uh, Tosca and even trying to figure out how you can recycle and reuse the materials that are generated during the battery manufacturing process has been really challenging. Yeah, I mean, that's a that's obviously something that's facing the whole industry. Um, you know, we mentioned sort of their commit, genuine commitment to doing things uh, for the environment. And I think total life cycle of the, the batteries, for example, is, is a great example. And those are not new regulations, are they? No, they're not. They're old <laughs> as well. And, and also just the issue of um, a lot of the, like we talked about Tosca and the materials that are needing to be brought in to be used, once they're here, they're really valuable. <laughs> and so you don't want to have any of them waste and finding ways to recycle them and reuse them in the process is something that I think a lot of the EV manufacturers are focused on because we don't produce those materials in the United States, at least as of right now. As far as sort of extracting the minerals at the end of that, that's obviously a very, you know, if you, if you take the battery uh, out of the car, for example, or, or take, for example, um, the EVATOL, the electric vertical takeoff and landing industry, where they're, it's battery powered flight. So the battery reaches a certain level of degradation there and needs to come out of the plane because it's literally fighting gravity. Uh, but it's then well suited for other purposes for, you know, uh, utility scale storage of energy, mm -hmm. uh, maybe even in, in cars and things like that. So you, these companies are focused on each iterative use of the battery, but eventually it becomes just its parts. Right. And that extraction industry obviously involves a lot of permitting as a heavily regulated area. Right. And if you're taking apart a battery to recycle the innards, you know, there are hazardous materials involved. Right. Uh, and then you get into the question of, am I going to need a treatment storage and disposal permit, which has implications to your point earlier, these companies want to feel like they're saving the world and helping the environment and then turning around and trying to get a treatment storage and disposal facility has different connotations. So trying to navigate that. Yeah. So what are some of the other issues that uh, clients in the EV space are facing? Well, one other thing that I've heard is the question about how um, we build out charging station infrastructure. A lot of states have approached the regulatory aspects of charging station infrastructure differently. So there's a real patchwork out there and trying to figure out, you know, who's going to own the charging station, who's going to build the charging station, who's going to maintain it. And will all cars and batteries be compatible with the charging stations that are out there? So I think that's, that's an issue that's facing some of our clients. And yeah, I suspect there's a, a local permitting element to some of these, some Absolutely. of these issues. Mm -hmm. that states could really probably help pave the way to, to remove that barrier. I agree. It's really exciting to be working with our clients as they try and navigate these issues all the way from identifying sites to building out the site to starting manufacturing. And I mean, and they're doing really cool stuff. I mean, it's really cool stuff. Um, you know, electric flight, electric vehicles uh, really is inspiring. And I, I love partnering with them and, and working with you and many others at the firm on on these issues. I do too. It was good talking to you today. Great to see you.